So last time we made a video about this guy, it was in a pretty negative context because we were talking about the time he had gotten hit up high by Vancouver Canucks defenseman Nikita Zadorov and the ensuing suspension that was given out to the Canucks defenseman as a result. Today's video, though, is a lot more of a positive one, and I think it's one that Red Wings fans will have different opinions about based off of who you ask. But this is a conversation that I wanted to have regardless because I do think it is a very important one to have. Let's talk today about Red Wings forward Lucas Raymond and ask the question, how much money is he going to sign for on his next deal? Now, at the time of recording this audio, he still has not signed an extension. He has been eligible to sign an extension ever since the summer of last year. But in some sort of a power move, the Red Wings and Raymond have not agreed to a contract extension yet. And you could very well say this is working very well in Raymond's favor. This is because Raymond this year has been such a stud and it's been really evident the past few games especially. Raymond, this year in 2023-2024, is a 21-year-old forward, 5'10", 183 right-handed guy, as we had said, signed till the end of this season on his ELC, and he has 44 points in 54 games played. That's on pace for about 67 points on the year, which would best his career high of his rookie season, 57 points in 82 games two seasons ago. Now, when it comes to one season ago, he's already matched his point production from that year in 20 fewer games, which is just great to see. You always recognize that the sophomore slump does exist. It's mostly because NHL teams have one year's worth of tape to actually review and look at when it comes to analyzing players. So when a rookie comes in, the tape that they analyze is like junior tape. Nobody really pays too much attention to that at the pro scouting level. So it's a lot easier to surprise teams with your skill, your talent, the way you read the game, and the way you proceed. After one year, though, Teams get their jump on you, and you have to adjust in years two, three, four, and more. That's why the sophomore slump exists, and that's why Lucas Raymond, you could say, declined in point production from two years ago to one year ago, but his progress this season is honestly a sight to behold, which is why we're taking a look at the production he's gotten now. Raymond is such a dynamic, offensively gifted guy that you see some of the goals that he is scoring nowadays the fact that he's willing to hold on to the puck a little bit longer, the fact that he's able to make calmer reads whilst being under pressure and evade pressure in magnificent ways, either by dangling and turnstiling around guys like he did with Tyler Myers the other night, or just holding on to the puck, moving to an open area and firing a shot right by the goalie like he had scored the other night against Calgary, Lucas Raymond has really developed more of a cerebral killer mindset type of play style that is just so fun to watch in the offensive zone. You know that David Fincher movie? Yeah, The Killer? That's exactly what I was thinking about when I was reviewing some of the game tape of what Raymond has accomplished because this guy is so precise, pristine, and some of the moves that he's able to pull off, they look so nice that you have to start wondering, okay, when it comes to contract negotiations, where exactly does Steve Eiserman go with this discussion? Where does Raymond and his camp go? Because when you break it down, I mean, 21 years old, he's turning 22 in March, so early happy birthday to Raymond, but 22 years old, and he is already at a 60-70 point pace in the NHL. That's great. But if you want to sign this player long term, how much does that dollar amount go for? You could say that if you wanted to compare other names on the Red Wings, hey, Dylan Larkin is signed on for 8.7 mil, you've got Alex Dabrinkit who is on for 7.8 mil, Andrew Kopp's making 5.6, JT Comfer's making 5.1. Yeah, Raymond should probably be paid more than those two guys, but when it comes to the Dabrinkit and Larkin conversations, that is where you start to get into nuance. Because, if you want to talk about strictly points, this year, Larkin and Dabrinkit are the only two guys who are above Raymond in terms of points. Larkin's a point per game at 48 and 48, Dabrinkit has 46 points in the same 54 games played that Raymond has. So, if you wanted to say that in terms of what you have today, Raymond is maybe just a shade below Dabrinkit in terms of dollar amounts, you could say that Raymond should be making 7.5, maybe 7.7, .7 if you really wanted to get close then okay, that's honestly a pretty appropriate deal. Steve Eiserman and the Wings have no reason to not try to go long-term with this. But if Lucas Raymond is a businessman, which he could be, I don't know if he is, but if he is, then 
if he really feels like there's an opportunity for him to maximize his earning potential, which isn't really something that I think a lot of Red Wings players exhibit, but let's just say hypothetically it is. There is a world where Lucas Raymond decides, okay, I'm gonna be a good player in this league. Like, I'm on pace for 70 points this year, I'm probably gonna get an 80-90 point season once, maybe even try to crack 100 depending on how the rest of the development of my teammates goes. It's possible. So if he wanted to go short term, go the Elias Pettersson route, then who's to stop Lucas Raymond from signing a shorter term, smaller dollar amount deal, let's say 5.5, 5.75, just so he gets a little bit more than Cop and Comfort. Let's say he signs that for two, three years. And then by the time 2027, 2028 rolls around, Raymond is a solidified 80 point guy and he re-enters negotiation saying, okay, I'm consistently in the top range of the NHL, pay me top range of the NHL money. You've got some wingers making 9, some wingers making 9.5, pay me that. Of course, that wouldn't be ideal from the Detroit Red Wings point of view, but when it comes to players who are capable of doing that, I feel like it really takes like a number one star to be able to say that you're doing something like this. I call it the Elias Pettersson route for a reason, because that's kind of exactly what Petey did. But the bottom line is, Petey wouldn't be able to do this if he wasn't already regarded as the best player on the team. You kind of need to have that upper ceiling in order to keep guys from just doing this over and over again. And for the Wings, the reason I say this kind of mentality of maximizing your earning potential hasn't really been there is because it literally was an example like 20 years ago. Oh, you're not making more money than Lidstrom. Sorry, we can negotiate all you want, but we're not paying you more than Nick. You could say the same thing about Dylan Larkin could exist here. And Stevie Y really has no reason to go out there and try anything different. Larkin's making 8.7, and I mean, deservedly so, he's the heart and soul of the team. Two-way center, very capable guy, point-per-game guy as well. There's no reason for him to not be making a top dollar amount. But for Lucas Raymond, for him to potentially be in a spot where he could try to exercise a plan to maximize his earning potential, I don't know if that's really going to work with Steve Eiserman and this team. So if Raymond wants to secure his future, I guess maybe the best way to do that would be to go long-term. And if it is that, then what is the dollar amount? Do you want to go 7.5? Do you want to go 7.7? Do you want to go 7.8.9? Whatever, just so you can beat out Alex Dabrinkit? There is a level of dynamism to Dabrinkit's game that certainly does exist, but for Lucas Raymond, the fact that he is so young, he's five years younger than Dabrinkit after all, there's good enough reason to believe that if you paid him more AAV-wise than Dabrinkit, it would be very appropriate within the next few years, maybe even as soon as next year, depending on how the lines go and how the deployment goes. Don't even get me started on the Red Wings trying to maximize their earning potential with contracts they need to sign with guys like Moritz Sider too. That guy also needs a contract, and this video hasn't even talked about Sider the entire time. I'm just comparing this to forwards because I felt like this would have been easier, and also I wanted to make that Lucas Raymond killer thumbnail, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel Raymond's contract negotiations are going to go with Detroit? How much money do you think he signs for? Do you think they go eight years? And if so, what's the dollar amount appropriate for that kind of a contract? Would you rather see the wings go shorter term? Maybe a bridge deal of some sorts with a lower dollar amount? Do you think if they do this, it would be more beneficial to the wings or Raymond? Does it make so that Raymond gets a lot more money by the time a second contract is signed afterwards? Or is Raymond set to plateauing at a rate that's maybe less than $8.7 million worthy, for example? There's a lot of nuance that you could have in this conversation, but really, I'll admit the biggest reason I wanted to have it was because of that thumbnail. Man, that was a great movie. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Lucas Raymond and the conversations we've had about his contract. I hope you enjoyed this British Irish Rose 99. And... Bye.